Thank you for staying with me on Crunch Econometrics. In this tutorial, I will cover the identification procedure in Arima modeling using Stata. Remember that one of the essence of Arima modeling is to forecast a series. And the box Jenkins methodology identified four steps by which that can be done. The first step is identification. Second step is estimation. Third step is diagnostics checking. And the final step is forecasting. But in my usual practice, each of these steps will be discussed in separate videos in order to extensively drive home some level of understanding rather than lumping all the steps in one single video. So this video covers only identification procedure. However, before you watch this video on identification, I will encourage you to watch this requisite video which covers the basics of ARMA and ARIMA modeling. In this video, you will learn the foreknowledge or background knowledge on ARIMA. So please don't skip the prerequisite video. Make sure you watch it before you watch this video on identification. So the question we are going to answer in this tutorial is how can the appropriate model be identified? And to do that thoroughly, we are going to use a quarterly data set on the producer price index on US from 1960 to 2002. I obtained this data from Anikachova Econometrics Academy. The link to that data is what is being shown on the screen. You can also assess the data and practice along. The required tools for identification are the Corellogram, the ACF, and the PACF. I always know that the process of identification is more of an art than of science. How do I mean? Two or three people can look at the same data and they can come up with almost similar but not exactly identical ARIMA model. So it is indeed more of an art than of science. It comes with experience and practicing and using alternative models. Now, to identify the appropriate lags for the AR and MA process, you will require the correlogram, which is the plot of the ACF and the PACF against their respective lag lengths. And we know that the ACF is simply an autocorrelation function and the PACF is the partial autocorrelation function. The PAC measures correlation between time series observations that are K time periods apart after controlling for correlations at intermediate lags. In other words, it is the correlation between yt and yt minus k after removing the effects of the intermediate y's. Basically, the PACF measures marginal impacts. In ARIMA modeling, it is important for you to understand this table. You must have come across it in different textbooks. This table will guide you in selecting applicable models or alternative models that you can estimate and from there derive the most applicable ARIMA model. If the ACF pattern shows an exponential decay or a damped sine wave pattern or both, while the PACF pattern shows significant spikes through the first lag, you are likely going to have an AR process. But if the ACF pattern shows significant spikes through the first lag, and exponential decay on the PACF, you are likely to have an MA process. So if there are exponential decays from the first lag on the ACF and the PACF also shows exponential decay from the first lag, then you are having a combination of ARMA. So that also means that when the ACF pattern and the PACF pattern shows exponential decays, you are having an ARMA PQ. One thing you'll observe from this table is that the AR and MA processes move in opposite directions. Now, going to the identification procedure, how do you engage it? I have listed here five simple steps to guide you. The first thing you need to do is plot the series to visualize whether stationary or not. You can also use a correlogram to do that and observe the pattern of the ACF and the PACF of the raw data. If the series is stationary, just straight on go to step four, determine the models that will be good starting points and estimate such models. But if the series is not stationary, then you have to take the first difference 
of the raw data that is go to step three and from then on calculate the ACF and PACF from the correlogram and determine which models will be good starting points and estimate them. So having given you this preamble, now let's move on to Stata to take out an example. So to start off our analysis, we need to prepare Stata to run time series for us by executing this command t set t. I've already executed it, so let me show you the outcome. So here you can see time variable set. So now we are ready to estimate our Arima model. I have all the commands written out here. The first is to plot the raw series to observe whether stationary or not. I'll simply highlight this and execute. So here we can see that the series is trending upward, is exponentially trending upward, is not reverting to zero. So clearly this is a non-stationary series. To be sure that the series is non-stationary, alternatively, plus the ACF and the PACF to observe the trend. So I have the command for the AC, which is ACPPI. I've highlighted the command. I'm executing it. So you can see here, there's a gradual decline of the lags up to 15. So from lag 1 to lag 15 are outside the 95% confidence interval. The shaded area here is a 95% confidence interval. I'm still going to move all these graphs to PowerPoint to give you better explanation. So you can see there's a gradual decline. So this is one of the features of a non-stationary series. The next thing we need to do is to plot the PAC and observe the trend. Here's a command for the PAC. Am I lighting it? I click the run button. So here we can see there's a partial autocorrelation of PPI for the raw series. So having seen that the series is non-stationary, what do we need to do? We need to difference it. So once we difference it, we plot the series and let's see. This is the code 2 ATS line DPPI. This is a different series. I execute it. So the different series, we can see it has a constant mean and um, it reverts to zero, oscillates around zero, even though over time the variance is not constant. So it has a constant mean, but the variance is not constant. So we can still say that this series is stationary compared to what we saw before. So the difference PPI is what we are going to use for our ARIMA model. To be sure of what we are doing, let's look at the also correlation. So this is AC, the PPI. I run that. So here we can see the also correlation function for the difference series. The ACF tails off. Having shown significant spikes at lag 1, 2, 3, and every other thing shows no autocorrelation. So it's also an indication of a stationary series. The next thing we need to do is to plot the PACF of the different series. I highlight the code. I run it. So this is the PACF of the different series. Recall the plot of the raw PPI trending upwards, clearly non-stationary. And here we have the plot of the difference PPI, stationary around zero, even though the variance increases over time. So the difference PPI is what will be used for this ARIMA model. Again, recall the raw PPI and the ACF and its PACF. The ACF declines very slowly, up to 15 lags, indicating a non-stationary series. Since the first 15 lags are outside the 95% confidence interval while the PAC cuts off at lag 1 or lag 2. So again, we can validate that the raw PPI is a non-stationary series. Now, the question is this. How do we find that ARIMA pattern for the different series? The answer is by considering the pattern of the ACF and the PACF from the associated correlogram. I have listed here some hints to help you identify that model. Number one, if the PACF displays a sharp cutoff while the ACF decays more slowly, that is, it has significant spikes at higher lags. This is what I mean. There are significant spikes at higher lags, so the ACF decays slowly while the PACF cuts off sharply. So if that is the case, we say that the series is an AR process, that is the different series. It implies that the autocorrelation pattern is explained more easily by adding AR terms than by adding MA terms. Number two, if the PACF of DPPI shows a sharp cutoff and or the first lag is positive, 
let's take a look at that this is the pacf it shows a sharp cut off as we can see and the first lag is also statistically significant and positive so if that is the case then you have to consider adding an ar term to the model the, number three the lags at which the pacf cuts off is the indicated number of ar terms let's take a look at that again so the pacf cuts off at lag one so you have to start by looking at an ar1 process you may also consider an ar3 because lag three is also significant and positive number four MA process is commonly associated with negative autocorrelation at the first lag. So if the ACF of the different series shows a sharp cutoff and or the first lag is negative, then you have to consider adding an MA term to the model. And the lags at which the ACF cuts off is the indicated number of MA terms. So if you look at these steps, you will observe that both AR and MA move in opposite direction. If the first lag of the PAC is positive, it tells you you are dealing with an AR model. But if the first lag of the ACF is negative, it tells you you are dealing with an MA process. So you need to practice and have a lot of experiments or experience when handling ARIMA model. Always remember that parsimony is the key word because parsimonious models give better focus than overparameterized model. In other words, pick that model with the smallest number of parameters to be estimated. By the time we take an example during estimation, you will understand what I mean. So parsimony is very, very important. At this point, I need to tell you that identifying the model is not exactly straightforward and in less typical cases, it requires not only experience but also a good deal of experimentation with alternative models so these alternative models are listed here we are going to look at arima 111 112 113 311 312 and 313 you will observe that i'm not using an ar2 process at all this is because if you look at the pac the, the second lag here is not significant. So I'm only looking at AR1 and AR3, which is this. While for the MA process, I'm considering 1, 2, 3. So these are the tentative models we are going to estimate. And from there on, we pick the most appropriate model. So at this point, I will say I have concluded identification. In my next video, I will talk about estimation. I will encourage you to explore references as shown on the screen. Video tutorials are not substitutes for reading, so please make sure you read up these textbooks. Also look at several journal articles and internet sources in order to get more understanding on ARIMA modeling. It's been good having you. Thank you for staying with me. Subscribe to my channel if you have not done so. Please don't go away. I'll be right back with step two, which is how you can estimate an ARIMA model.